whenever I would get stressed out, I would just go down and just sit and like watch the sunset or just like watch the ocean and that would make me feel better. And it looked like people were having fun surfing. So I just went on Craigslist and I got a surfboard and I was like, okay, I'm gonna learn how to do this. I'm a fourth year computer science student at UC San Diego. I work with engineers for exploration in Ryan Kastner's lab, um, and I'm working on the SmartFin project. Phil is a scientist at Scripps um, Institute of Oceanography, and he's the lead engineer for the SmartFin project, so he does a lot of the hardware side of things, but it helps to have students who maybe know a little bit more about machine learning, who can put together different ways of visualizing data and processing data. SmartFin is a surfboard fin with embedded sensors inside of it. We want to increase the spatial density of oceanographic measurements. So there's not enough either autonomous sensors or buoys out in the water collecting data about the ocean. And specifically, the regions that we care about collecting data in are nearshore environments. Um, so that's like the surf zone regions really close to the beach where the waves are breaking. The reason why it's hard to get autonomous sensors layer is because of the high energy wave dynamics. They'll make it either really costly to put sensors layer or the amount of maintenance that they need is really high. So the idea is that if we could utilize surfers who are already in these areas, then we can maybe give them a sensor and they could collect data for us. Right now, we just have a temperature sensor and an IMU, which is an inertial measurement unit. So that measures acceleration, um, angular velocity, compass heading. So that's more of how the surfer and the surfboard are interacting with the water. From that, we can get things like wave energy density, significant wave height, wave period and frequency, but it requires collecting a lot of data in very specific locations and then processing all of that data. So that's more of what I'm working on right now. So there's kind of two sides to this. So. What scientists really care about is that the surfer's movement on the surfboard isn't actually affecting the readings. So if we're taking a temperature reading and the surfer catches a wave, because of the increased velocity that the surfer has, it'll increase the temperature reading and that'll mess with the data. So ideally, we'd only want to collect scientific data when the surfer's just floating and acting like a buoy. So it's important that we can get these really accurate labels on these really kind of random signals that we have. Um, and the best way that we think that we can do that is using machine learning techniques. On the flip side of that, the surfer probably doesn't really care as much about the temperature of the water, but rather if they knew maybe how many waves they caught that day or how far they paddled that day, they'd be more inclined to upload their data so that we could look at it. So it's more of this community-based approach to collecting data. And while a lot of the project is associated with learning more about the ocean in terms of learning more about climate change, learning more about how human activity is affecting the ocean, it's really cool that we can give this tool to people because that will encourage them to educate themselves about ocean health and kind of make them stand up for their own local beach breaks and ocean health in their local areas.